NFS or Network File System offers the ability to share the hard drives or directories of a server with the client on a network. This is normally used for thin clients. A thin client, sometimes also called a lean or slim client, is a computer or computer program which depends heavily on some other host such as a server to fill its traditional roles. Clients have no hard drives and thus need a virtual hard drive. The NFS client mount shares from the server while the user thinks they are saving their documents to their local thin client disk, they are in fact saving them to the server. The advantage of NFS Local workstations use less disk space because commonly used data can be stored on a single machine and still remain accessible to others over the network. There is no need for users to have a separate home directories on every network machine. Home directories could be set up on the NFS server and made available throughout the network. Storage devices such as floppy disks, CD-ROMs, DVD drives and zip drives can be used by other machines on the network, thus reducing the number of removable media drives throughout the network. It should be pointed out that using NFS is not as popular as it was, since there are now other ways of achieving the same objectives. NFS would now be unlikely to be used as the file sharing protocol of choice, However, it is introduced at this stage to illustrate a client-server file sharing relationship. This lesson requires both the Linux server and client at some point being connected to the internet to install a number of applications. Then several setup applications are required to be updated, meaning that you will need to be familiar with the terminal and the nano commands. First configure the Linux server for internet access. So change the network adapter to NAT. When the server has restarted, check that the interfaces file have been configured for DHCP. And if necessary, reconfigure this file and reboot the server. If you've been following the suggestions during this lesson, then these two statements will only be commented out. So all you have to do is remove the hash sign. Check for internet connectivity by pinging a web page such as Google. Use the control Z to stop. In most cases, it's best to check for any updates using sudo apt-get command. To install NFS, the packages will need to be downloaded and installed on the server. Two packages are required called NFS kernel server NFS common and RPC bind. It is not the intention to explain exactly how these applications work, only that they are required to be able to use NFS. In most cases, when installing any application, we would use the command apt-get, then automatically install it by using the install command, as shown here. This will cause a number of messages to appear when installation begins. After a short period, the application will be installed and you will return to the command prompt. RPC bind will need to be started and this can be achieved using the following command. Notice the space between the sudo and the backslash. Also there are no capitals. Next the interfaces file will need reconfiguring so you'll be able to communicate with the clients on the same network. Once again remount any script that will not be used. Save and exit. The virtual box network adapter will now require change into internal network. When the server has restarted, check the IP address using ifconfig. NFS uses a file called exports. This contains the address or name of the host that are allowed to access the NFS directory and also the name of the directory that is shared. The directory that we shall be sharing is called shared underscore file, so this will need creating in the root directory. If in doubt, type in cd forward slash, and the last two characters of the cursor prompt will be replaced with the forward slash dollar sign. To create the new directory, use the following command. Check that it has successfully been created using the list command. 
The description of this directory will need adding to the export file. Using the nano command, we can edit the file. Insert the following text at the end of the file, which is the name of the shared directory and the IP address of the client that is allowed to share this directory. So forward slash shared underscore file is the name of the directory that is yet to be created on the Linux client. 192.168.1.2 will be the Linux client IP address. RO means read only and, and async means file operation is asynchronous, which increases the performance. Save and exit. NFS now needs to be restarted so we can use the following commands. If no errors occur, then type in the following command that will show you what directory has been mounted. For example, it appears at forward slash shared files 192.168.1.2. Next, we shall create the thin client. Configure the Linux client in the virtual box to use the NAT adapter. When the client has initialized, open the terminal. Edit the interfaces file. Check that the ENP0S3 has been configured to DHCP. Rem any other scripts found within the file relating to the adapter's EMP0S3. Save and exit. Check connectivity by pinging google.com. Use Ctrl Z to stop the ping command. Now update the client. If the following error occurs, use the following command. Basically, the error occurs when another client has been cloned within VirtualBox and some apps are still being used by the machine that has been cloned. To overcome this, we need to remove the old package and replace it. Now update again. To use NFS, each client will require two packages, RPC bind and NFS common. Change the Linux client to a static IP address that is on the same network as the Linux server, using the following scripts. To rem out the DHCP, save and exit, shut down the client. Select the Linux client within the virtual box, click on settings, network, and change attach to, to Intel and network, then restart the client. Open the terminal and check connectivity to the Linux server. On the Linux client, create a directory called server shares in the root directory. Type in cd forward slash to return to the root directory. Once again, we shall know if we are on the root directory by the forward slash dollar sign. Use the following command to create the new directory. And check that it has been successfully created using the list command. Let's just take a break here and recap on what we have basically done. Other than installing a number of applications and updating both the Linux server and the Linux client. We can see we have created two directories. One on the Linux server called shared file and another on the Linux client called Server Shares and assigned it with an IP address of 192.168.1.2. We updated the exports file on the Linux server with the client's IP address. So those that are listed in the export file can share information or data that is put into the shared file directory. Our next course of action is basically to say to the Linux client whatever is put into the directory shared file will ultimately appear in the server shares directory found on the Linux client. So a link must now be created. To do this, we use the following command. If an error occurs, this implies that it can't find 192.168.1.2, then check that you have left the space between the forward slash shared file and the forward slash server shares. So check that you have named the directory correctly. And in spelling errors or the use of capitals in one name and not in the other will cause an error. So in the last command, you instructed the terminal to seek out the server and address of 192.168.1.1.
and find a directory called Shared File. And the contents of this directory will be copied into the directory called Server Shares found on the client computer. We can see an example of this next. Within the directory called Shared File found on the Linux server, create a new directory called New Directory. Then check using the list command. Now if we check back on the Linux client, the directory called Server Shares. Contain the new directory that was created on the Linux server. The packages that were installed within this lesson only need to be done once. If another client joins a network and wishes to connect to the NFS on the server, then that too will require RPC bind and NFS common, along with updating the exports file found on the Linux server with the IP address of that client.